University Pirates. Respect the H with Eugene Marshall. Hey, Pirate fans, welcome to Respect the H, our new show that goes right along with our new season, our new conference, our new football coaching staff, our new student athletes, and our new programs. This program is going to be designed to talk about Hampton University, Pirate Athletics, and the Hampton Roads community. We're going to talk about our celebrated history as we roll into our 151st year of existence here at Hampton University that started by our founder, Brigadier General Retired Samuel Chapman Armstrong, that designed Hampton University to educate newly freed slaves and Native Americans. We fast forward to our 12th president, Dr. William R. Harvey, who has diversified Hampton University in many ways, from the Proton Therapy Institute that treats cancer patients, that eases human misery and saves lives, to having four satellites that are flying right now, to the 90 new academic programs that Hampton University has developed under Dr. Harvey's leadership to 18 new buildings under his leadership. And then we talk about athletics. He had the vision to move us from the CIAA in 1995 to the MEAC conference, going from Division II, where we won national championships, to Division I. And then 22 years later, he had the vision to move us again making us the second HBCU to join a diverse conference going to the Big South, effective July 1, 2018. Coupled with the fact that in 1995, Hampton University was the first athletic program to introduce sailing as a sport, where the majority, 90% of the student athletes come from Europe. If you look at our back-to-back -back women's volleyball championship in uh, 2014 and 15, the majority of that team came from Europe. We then became the first HBCU to start a men's lacrosse program in Division I history. And we added women's soccer. Now we've kind of danced in the end zone by adding, going to the Big South, to a major minor, majority conference, which really shows what Hampton University is about, diversity and inclusion. And so I want you to come with us on this journey this year to go behind the scenes to look at Hampton University, Pirate Athletics, Hampton Roads Community. I want to talk about academics for a second. Our 350 student athletes, 150 of them are Dean's List students. Another 70 of them have a GPA of a 3.0 to a 3.4. 67 have a GPA of a 3.4 to a 4.0. We have 21 student athletes that have made the Academic Honor Society. And we have a graduation rate that has ballooned from 56% in 2011 to a whopping 79% in 2018. So we put the student and student athlete here at Hampton University. We also go out in the community to meet and greet young students to let them know what it's like to talk to a college student so that they may be motivated to come to a college. It may not be Hampton University, but Hampton University will be the impetus behind them going to college. And that's what we're all about, community. Successful athletic programs. We're up for a challenge here in the Big South, but I believe that our coaches and our student athletes will be ready, willing, and able to compete successfully to win championships. And we also want you, our fans, and you, our fans in the community, to come out and support us. We have a lot of things to talk about and we'll be back to take those on.
Hampton University is one of the most beautiful university settings you'll find anywhere. From our world-class research centers to our dedication to the arts and our athletic programs where we build champions, we've launched satellites that will better predict the weather. The Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute Cancer Treatment Center is easing human misery and saving lives. Hampton University faculty, staff, and students are making a difference in the global community through service and science. With the brain tumor being so close to my optic nerves, regular radiation would definitely have damaged those optic nerves. There was that possibility of blindness. Proton therapy gave me the ability to do the things that I need for my family. This is what cancer treatment looks like at the Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute. Minimal damage to healthy tissue. Minimal side effects. Live your life. Let us fight your cancer. Ask your oncologist about proton therapy. Hey, Pirate fans, welcome back to Respect to H. We have our special guest, Dr. Thomas Jones, who is director of our marching force. Dr. Jones, welcome. Thanks, Coach. Nice to meet you. It's been a, a, a great uh, year last year for you, your first year, really coming in and changing the culture of the band. Uh, just let our listeners in on how you change the culture. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that uh, most people might not know is that a lot of our goals align with the same goals as the athletic department in that um, we want to reach out to the community. That's, that's our biggest thing. We want to get, uh, we've been doing a lot of performances, uh, parades, uh, high school pep rallies, and really getting our name out there, not just for the band, but for Hampton University as a whole, and ex ex inspiring young students to do something greater in their lives and, and give them that positivity. Talk about your recruiting. You did a massive nationwide recruiting effort yes. and it really turned up very successful. Yeah, it, it took a lot of personal effort on my part. Um, driving around in the month of February, I drove over 20,000 miles, rented a car, packed some instruments in there and just drove to different high schools. And uh, throughout the course of the past year, we've met with over 100 high schools uh, and talk to the students and really, you know, the way we brand our program, the first thing I, I talk about is their grades. I'm not asking about their, their playing ability or whatever. I, I want to know, do you have good grades? Are you, are you uh, a good student? Are you, are you coachable? You know, we, when we bring all these students in from all over the country, we, we have to have good team building. And so that's, that's one of the things that we really look for. And then we, we want to look for students that do have that playing ability so that we don't have to rehearse as much, so that we can put a good show on the field and, and not take the students away from their class time as, as uh, much as possible. You could see last year the difference and the discipline in the performances of the band. And each game, it got better and better. And by the time we got to basketball season, they were off the charts. Can you l tell our listeners how you were able to each contest get the band better and better? Yeah, so one of the things I draw upon is my experience in the Army. I'm in the Army Reserve. I'm a drill sergeant in the Army Reserve. So I kind of bring that mentality to the, to the field. Uh, and and we, we build on fundamentals from the ground up and, and we tell the students, you know, we, we motivate them not, you know, by intimidation or anything, but we motivate them by building that family environment, building that culture that's more professional. We come in, we work, we get out. And the students really started buying into it. As soon as they saw that first performance, they, they were like, wow, this is us. You know, let, let's reach higher heights. And so after, after seeing that week after week, it, it gave them even more motivation. How did you feel um, July 29th uh, this year versus July 29th last year when you walked in and you saw over 100 students that were your students that were coming in for uh, band camp? Yeah, it, it's, it's a great feeling. Um, one of the things that, that uh, really uh, that I latch on to is the fact that we have a staff that's all on the same page. You know, our assistant directors, Clifford Cox, Alexander Hamilton, our auxiliary coaches, Megan McKinney, Brent Martin, they really stepped up to the plate and, and seeing those kids walk in the door, you know, it, it was a real testament to their hard work as well. And for me, it, it makes my job easier knowing that everybody's pulling their weight and, and we're, we're all sharing the load. What are your goals for the uh, 
force for this year. Yeah, so we're, we're going to build off of our, our successes over the past year. Um, in January, we, we participated in the Honda Battle of the Bands, in which we performed in the Mercedes-Benz Dome in Atlanta uh, in front of over 60,000 people. And one of the things we want to do is just capitalize off of that. We want, we want to do more, put on more shows, play more in the community, really uh, brand HU and, and let, let the community know that we're here for you. I want you, our fans, to come out and see the force. You will not be disappointed. We'll be back. We have much more to talk about here on Respect Age. The rich heritage of Hampton University is now available in a progressive learning environment. I am University College at Hampton University. Yo soy University College in Hampton University. I am University College at Hampton University. I am University College at Hampton University. We, we are, are University, University College, College at Hampton University. University. University College offers accredited programs for all progressive learners. Online, flexible schedules, military friendly. University College at Hampton University. Continuing education you can trust. Hampton University is one of the most beautiful university settings you'll find anywhere. From our world-class research centers to our dedication to the arts and our athletic programs where we build champions, we've launched satellites that will better predict the weather. The Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute Cancer Treatment Center is easing human misery and saving lives. Hampton University faculty, staff, and students are making a difference in the global community through service and science. Welcome back to Respect the H. We have with us today our new head coach, uh, Mr. Robert Prenti. Coach, welcome. Thank you. You know, it's, it's nice that you're back here in Virginia, uh, your home. So tell our listeners what it's like to be back home. Well, you know, first of all, just to, to be back home by the sea. You know, I came here in 1983, uh, played linebacker here. I was here for two years and, and I enjoyed my time here. I think that I learn a lot. I think what, what sticks out to me the most was the faculty and staff and, and Dr. Harvey sitting down and talking to me and telling me how important education was. You know, growing up in Chatham, Virginia, which is a rural area with one stoplight, you know, I had never been to a city with, with so many different stoplights when I came at Hampton. So it was a great learning experience for me, but I think when I look back on it, it you know, I had some great professors, you know, that encouraged me here. They, they wanted me to, to, to to excel academically, and that was important, but also I learned a lot on the football field. I learned that you know, I had to take on more responsibility and accountability. So, and Ed White was the coach at the end, and along with, uh, and Coach Freeman went on and became the head coach. So, you know, Hampton is, is, is in my heart. I love it, and I'm, I'm so happy to be back, and I'm, and I'm very thankful to be back. Let's go back a little further. What some of the, our listeners don't know is that you played at Hardgrave. Exactly, exactly. I, you know, I'm, I graduated from Hargrave in 1983. I was the, uh, actually the first Afro-American to graduate from that. So it was started in 1909, and I went there and I played football there and uh, had a good career there. And, and then once again, you know, I ended up coming to Hampton. And, and then from, from there, I, I, I transferred to Alabama A&M and graduated and played football for Alabama A&M. And then I, I worked... Uh, at a maximum security prison for juvenile delinquents for five years. You know, I had no idea I would get into coaching. And, you know, and I always tell people, you never know what God got for you. And then my calling was to come coach. And then I went back home, back to the state of Virginia again. And, and I started coaching at Gretna High School, a program that was zero and 44, hadn't won a game in five years. You know, we had a chance to go there and coach and, and went on that program, became very successful, won four state championships. And, and then also with it, my last year, we were 11 and one. And I went from there to Hargrave Military Academy, taking me back to Hargrave, but it was the postgraduate program, which is the young men who have already graduated from high school, but they need to make the test scores. And some of the guys, you know, like 60 NFL players end up playing for me at that school from, from Zach Brown, who is now with the Washington Redskins, to Ahmad Brooks, is with the Green Bay Packers. You know, a lot of them, Brandon Flowers, DJ Parker, we had a lot of guys, even from this area, Philip Brown, and once again, DJ Parker. So, you know, but those, the main thing was that I learned now was, it was love. Those young men needed a lot of love, and that's what, that's what kept me into coaching. And then, because I found out then, if they love you, they'll play for you. And that was one of the, that was one of the biggest learning lessons at Hargrave. And from Hargrave, you know, I was never a grad assistant. I was never a student assistant. 
Tommy Turboville gave me a job right at Texas Tech. So basically, I'm going from, from prep school with 300 people at a game, and now my first game is against Texas to 109,000 people. You know, get a chance to meet Earl Campbell, Darrell Roy, your legendary coach. And so it's a lot took place. And then I left there and came to the University of Cincinnati, became the associate head coach and also the defensive coordinator. You know, I was there for four years with Turboville. And then I left, the, you know, I left at the end of the season last year and I went to East Carolina with Scott Montgomery. You know, it's, it's been great. My coaching profession has been great. And now I'm back home by the sea. And that's, that's pretty interesting. And what you didn't say was that when you were at the high school, Gretna High School, you are in the Virginia high school records because you turned the program from worst to first. Yeah, yeah, and I tell you, that's a great, that's great that you pointed out. See, that goes to show, I, I athletic director, he does a lot of research. I so did my research every time when I was... I'm with him, I see that. But you know, we played the third game, I never forget it, against uh, Bassett High School. And, and the USA is there and the Roanoke Times there, but they, they come on the field at the end of the game and say, Coach, congratulations. I said, congratulations for what? You're, the, you're in the record book for the all-time losing this program in the state of Virginia when it was 44 games. So I didn't know the guy had quit at 43. So I got the title. But then I said, okay, now, we, I'm competitive. So then we turned it around and, and went on to, of course, win four state championships after that. And, and I left and we was 11 and one. So it just goes to show sure. is that when you fight through adversity, great things can happen for you. What attracted you? about Hampton University football. Yes, we know it's your home by the sea and you're a Virginia native, but what about the program really got you going? Well, I, I think when you, when you look at Hampton, you, you know one thing, you know it's gonna start with academics. And you're seeing a lot of programs now that are struggling, the student athletes are struggling to, to make it academically. So I checked into the graduation rate and when I saw it was seven, nine percent, well, that was half my problem. That was half the battle right there as far as eligibility go. And then I started looking at, you know, how the structure was here. And, and I did some research on your background and where you've been, the people that, that, that you have worked with and, and being at Army. And, and, and then just being in an adverse situation, understanding that you guys were going to the Big South and having an understanding of the Big South. Because you, you, you're talking about going from one program to another one at a high level and what's required of that. So I said, mm, this job looked very, very appealing to me. And so then I, you know, I applied for it. And uh, of course, you know, I had a chance to, to reunite with Dr. Harvey and it was just, it was great. You know, it was great. His vision has always been there. I've always said that, you know, I've, I've worked at Texas Tech. I worked at Cincinnati. I worked at East Carolina, but I've never been around a president. And I, cause I've, you know, in football, you always meet the presidents, but one that's as innovative he is, you know, a business mind, but he understands the student athlete. And then that's a, that's a win for any coach to go to a school because there's a lot of schools that you go to that sometimes the president don't understand the athletic side of it. And once I knew he, he was an athletic guy, then I knew it was a win-win for us, for me. And when I say us, I'm talking about for me to join the program here at Hampton University. There's a whole lot more to talk about with coach. So stick with us, we're only in the second quarter. The rich heritage of Hampton University is now available in a progressive learning environment. I am University College at Hampton University. Yo soy University College in Hampton University. I am University College at Hampton University. I am University College at Hampton University. We, we are University, University College at Hampton, Hampton University. University. University College offers accredited programs for all progressive learners online. Flexible schedules, military friendly. University College at Hampton University, continuing education you can trust. Hey, Pirate fans. Welcome back to Respect to H. I'm here with Coach Prenny. We're going to finish our conversation talking about the 2018 Hampton Pirate football team. Coach, you came in December. You met with the team. What you tell them? You know, we had a plan. The first plan was recruit the players that we have here. You know, it was very important that I let the guys know that was already on the team, that they are the team that we have right now. So it was, it was vital that I got to know them as human beings. And when I say human beings, meaning that I needed personal time with them. And after I felt comfortable enough to feel like we still got, the, we got those guys locked in, that's when we went on the road and started recruiting. 
and it's been a it's been recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. And now you can see with the roster, we have 58 new players. We have 14 BCS players. So we, we've been all around. We got guys from, but we got guys from different states. We, we got, but our primary recruiting area is a 757. Well, I want to talk about that for a second. Hampton University had always been tagged in the last five years, four to five years, that we had not tapped in and utilized appropriately the 757. And since you are from this area and coached in this area and recruited in this area, what was your technique in getting us back into the 757? Well, I think it's about relationships. I think it comes down to, you know, spending time with that coach. You know, when you go to a coach in, in the 757 area, those coaches are very good football coaches. And they, they got great relationships because, you know, I think the thing that bothered me the most was, okay, Hampton is in the backyard, but we're watching TV and we're seeing all the kids leaving this area from the 757 going to play for schools. You know, it got to the point where they weren't going to Virginia Tech or Virginia no more. They were going to different schools as far as just schools outside of the state. So I knew that had to have been my first target, but also letting these players know that, hey, we got something to offer you here. We're going to give you a great education, and you're going to get to play good football. And you had a pro day for seniors that you didn't coach. And tell our listeners about how those seniors feel about you now. Well, you know, it's been expressed to me, and, and some of them actually came back this summer and worked out with us because they know that I'm, I'm about love, and, and I always say that over and over, is that, you know, you treat, you treat these young men right, and they will treat you right. And I knew when I got here, and being a guy that played here at Hampton, you know, you work hard for four years or, or three years and, and you get to play. And then on pro day, you got to go to somebody else's house to have your pro day. And I took it as a slap in the face and I said, I challenged myself to, to, to develop a pro day here for these young men. You all, I've always believed this. If you get me in my backyard, I'm better. And I want to get these young men in their backyard, which is Armstrong Stadium, and perform for those NFL scouts and they did a great job and we got some young men that's still in camp right now battling to make NFL team. And then you had a coaches clinic and you had a barbecue but you had a coaches clinic for area high school coaches and one of the most famous high school coaches in the history of high school football as well as Virginia State football was sitting right up front. Who that's right. That? Mike Smith. Mike Smith the head coach at Hampton. Me and Mike go way back when I was at Gretna High School. And, this, and once again, it goes back to relationships. I've always humbled myself as far as learning go. And I've always, I would see Mike at coaching clinics. I would ask Mike different questions. And he respected that. So when I put on the clinic, Mike was one of the first to sign up and come to the clinic. But not only Mike, though, we had about 100 coaches in, in the 757 area. But that goes back to us continuing to build that relationship with the coaches in the 757, we want, we want players from the 757. It's the bloodline of Hampton University recruiting. And as we fast forward through the summer, you had an excellent summer school and summer workout. We did, you know, but that, that credit goes to, you know, Ms. Winston and her staff. They did an outstanding job academically. I mean, our freshmen that came in, it was 16 of them, they finished with a a 3.3 grade point average, and, and our, our, our regular students, as far as our undergrad students go, they finish up with a 2.9. So that, that's, that's about where we want to be. And then Luke Butler, our strength coach, did an outstanding job. For four days a week, he ran, he ran one of the, the toughest off-season programs I've been around. And, and then for him to, to implement that into our program, as far as our off-season go, that meant a lot to me to, to say, okay, now we're heading the direction. We're, we're hitting on all cylinders. We're hitting it academically. And now we're also hitting it as far as strength and conditioning go. And when you get, when you get both of those combinations, you're getting yourself ready to, to enter preseason. And now we're, we're in preseason. And I, I've been there a couple of days, and, and I've been impressed with the organization, the structure, the love, and the desire of the program. Just let our listeners in on your philosophy and how you took this uh, first 
uh, preseason camp under your leadership as head coach? Well, I, I think the first thing is it start with your coaching staff. You got to hire people that you trust. You got to hire people you got a relationship with. And it starts with our offensive coordinator, Brian White, who worked with me before. You know, and then it goes to our quarterback coach, Octavius Cash, who's also the passing game coordinator, Julius McNear, our running back coach. Then you go to Bobby Blizzard, who's a local guy that went on to play in the NFL, a Hampton High graduate. He, he does a great job with our wide receivers. Then you got Scott McConnell, that's this coaches our tight ends, does an outstanding job. And then you look at the defense side of the ball with Ryan Anderson, who is our intern defensive coordinator, doing an outstanding job. And then you got one of Hampton's own, Marcus Dixon, an NFL guy coaching the defensive line. Can't say enough about Marcus. And what, and what I want people to understand, and Marcus is also our community liaison. Very proud of Marcus. Think Marcus is going to be a superstar in this business. I really feel that way about Marcus. And then you got, then you got Kenyon Blue. Kenyon Blue was with me at Cincinnati. He's the defensive back coach, does a great job. And we split them up. So Kenyon will coach the corners. Ryan Anderson will coach the safe and the nickels. And then, then you got a guy just hired in Brandon Williams, who was my grad assistant. He know what I want. He know what I expect of him to coach the linebackers. So you put all that together. And then you sit down and you talk about what drills, what, what type of drills we're going to implement. You know, how are we going to approach these practice schedules? How are we going to script this? And those guys get it. And, and once again, everybody that I've hired, they either work with me or they had a prior relationship with me. So we kind of know what we want. And then the other part, which is the major part, the players. These young men have bought in. It's a different culture. If you was to, even today, if you visit the football office today, there's new pictures going up today. You will see one side where it starts with the CIAA in one area. Then it goes to the MEAC. And then you have the Big South. So when, after you walk through our building now, it will have, we will go from the past to the present to show you where Hampton football is going. Even to the team room, you will see the off-season program without jerseys, but with those young men working out towards that goal of making us not only you know, good on the football field, but also good in the classroom. Well, you know, I think this is the time for us to tell our listeners out there and our fans, come on out and support our Pirates football team. Our first game is Saturday, September 1st at 6 p.m. Armstrong Stadium against Shaw University. I expect everyone under the sound of my voice to be there and looking at me because I think you're going to see something special this year. I want to thank Coach Prenny for taking time out of his busy schedule to visit with us. We're going to have some other coaches throughout this show. Every Saturday, there's going to be a different coach for a different topic or a community leader or a university leader. So come on back and visit us at Respect the H.